Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's very much free. Oh, yeah. uh, you can support me unfinancially. Mm. Just hit that button, you get these great interviews. Um, and before I get to my guest, uh, a quick uh, note from our sponsor. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Settler. And I use a Daryl Settler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks, eh? All right, All right sure baby. thing, Daryl. Oh, oh, boy, I bet these are good, huh? Oh, got yeah. Real mug flavor. Smells good, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do these things. I'm sorry. They're hot on my gums. You lose your plate, Daryl? Yeah, I lost my plate in Boston. Uh, you lost your dentures in Boston. Why don't you push it down with some milk and push it into your puss? Cornerbacks, take three. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Sittler. And I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks? An hey? excellent idea. All right, hey. Let's try some mm. of this. Oh, it looks yumbo. You're in. Mm, it smells so good, too. Mm. See what's going on. It's got poor, dishonest. Ah, it's in French. Cat! I don't speak French. I'm sorry. That's your problem. Ah, oh, look at it in English. It's on English. Well, what the hell's it got two languages on the fourth channel? I only speak English. Because it's a bilingual country. It is not both. My friend, one language, one goddamn song. God says, Queen. Take four. Hi, I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Siddler. And I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. Guy Lafleur hockey stick. You give us the perfect? Yeah, sure thing, Daryl. Hey, this stuff looks a okay, huh? Yeah, it sure does. Well, I could try some mm, malt flavor and everything. And some Pepsi Cola with it? Hey! Oh, that's supposed to be, Daryl. Oh, God, it's a joke. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Doing good. That is awesome to hear. You're looking good. I think you're wearing the same, uh, what do you call those hats that you wear? What is it? They have a name. Um, you know what? I don't even know what, to, what are they called? Um, Brixton. <laughs> yeah, it's um, kind of like the, uh, I don't know, people that used to drive the little MGs would wear and stuff. I'm going to have to look up the name of those because they're very much in style, um, for sure. So we've got a few things to talk about. I've talked with Mark before, um, always a great interviewee. Um, just quick, quickly, mm -hmm. Mark, um, yesterday on Eddie Trunk's show, um, your former bandmate and co-founder of um, Gray White, Jack Russell, said something that was kind of um, interesting Um he was, I won't quote it, but he said to the effect that he would definitely like to shake your hand before he kicks off. And then a little further into um, what I read was that he said, you, basically, you know what, we grew up together, we started this band together. So any kind of response to that, Mark? Uh, that's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, we did start the band together. Um, yeah, that uh, I haven't seen it, but... Uh... That's would you cool. be open to you know shaking his hand if you'd like let's say you guys are backstage somewhere and you guys walk by each other or yeah I, I wouldn't dodge him or anything yeah shake his hand or whatever well that's awesome to hear um so moving on let's talk about uh some great white stuff you guys have a run coming up about what 10 shows and you and you leave tomorrow correct uh yeah we have three in a row coming up uh up north in washington and vancouver bc then we have another one i think it's like in the detroit area and then we're playing actually pretty close to my house out in the desert it, it's uh indio california i believe no palm desert near palm springs and um then a couple more after that. I'd have to look at the schedule. You can go to officialgreatwhite.com on the tour dates. There's so many dates coming in every day. It, I have to usually go on it to figure it, figure out where I'm going. <laughs> well, <laughs> I or, go or, to the airport and I know my flight information. And then you get all your information from your CEO, Bridget, correct? Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. So I'll put links, everybody, um, down below so you can check out where um, – Mark's going to be playing. Make sure you go out and get those tickets and uh, pick up some of the nice merch as well. So, actually, um, I know royalties are a big thing in the music. Well, back in the 80s, they were anyways. If you if you had some hit songs that you guys obviously did in the 80s, um, the royalties yeah. still might be coming in. And I noticed that you had about a quarter of a million dollar on a, on a poker table the other day. Tell me about that. 
Yeah, I wish it was a quarter of a million. If it was a quarter of a million, it wouldn't be on a poker table. <laughs> um, no, uh, what, every once in a while, I mean, you know, just to get out and do something away from the band activities. I, I like to play pool. That's one of my big hobbies. I actually train with professional uh, coaches and stuff like that. I played in the world championships before. Um, but I, I like poker, you know. Um, don't really play it that often. Um, but in a tournament format, it's not like a cash game where you're playing with your own money and I'm putting 250000 on the table or whatever. They give each player so many chips. The entry fee, say it's, say it's $100 or whatever. You pay $100 to get in the tournament and there's 90 players or whatever. And then they make a prize pool. It's so much for first, so much for second, so much for third. You know what I mean? So the chips are just a way to kind of keep score. Um, you know, if you end up with all the chips in the tournament, you win. You and know what, what I mean? Was, what did you win? Did you not come second or something? I came in second place. Um, I think it was uh, $1,261. It was 150 to get in. Okay, so, so put, um, put on your poker face. Um, I'll I'll be able to tell. <laughs> are, are you are you enjoying this interview so far? Who me? Yeah. <laughs> put oh, put on my poker face. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, we were talking about in the first interview. Um, you're you, you're a big snooker player. Um, and you've won some tournaments playing snooker. Not snooker. Not snooker. Pool. Oh no, eight ball. Um, actually, um, I play most of the games, um, nine ball, 10 ball, you know, eight ball. Yeah. Um, kind of learning one pocket, but, um, I, I haven't really played on a snooker table. Mm. Um, but I, I love the game. I watch it. You know, I know most of the players I, I follow it when it's on like Dazen or whatever, you know, it's mostly in the UK and stuff like Ronnie O'Sullivan and, you know, some of the legends of the game. I really enjoy watching it, but um, I'm by no means a snooker player. But There's I um, a really good old English player. I'm telling you, he was great. Uh, remember Benny Hill? No. The comedian. Canadian ben no, he's a comedian, Benny Hill. Oh, comedian. Okay. You oh, yeah, the, Benny Hill. Of course, of course. You course. remember that pool up playing pool episode where you had that big orange afro and all the medallions? <laughs> no, I know. I'm have gonna have to. to I'll, put, I'll put a picture up. You know, it was hilarious. <laughs> um, I think of pool in England and I think of Benny Hill. So we also talked about something that's true to my heart: um, alcoholism. And um, you have been sober for how many years, Mark? Um. A little past 15. Wow. Um, I got sober November 2nd of 2008. I just crossed the 15 last November. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I get involved and, uh, you know, I'm a sober advocate. I make myself available for anybody that's looking, you know, to make a life change and maybe um, if they're in trouble with alcohol. And some people get confused about what I do. I'm not trying to get the world sober. Just people that are suffering, you know, um, just kind of just, you know, reaching out and letting people know there's another life available. You don't have to live in this dark world, you know. Um, and if I get one-on-one -on -one with them, you know, I, I kind of tell them how I did it. And maybe they can take a couple of things from that, you know, to get started. Mm -hmm. And because it worked for me, yeah. Uh, because a lot of people, I've I've said this before, but I think uh, some people that are in trouble, like maybe losing things, like their family, their car, their job, you know, it, it's affecting their life uh, negatively. They're they want to get sober, but they kind of just don't do it. You know, they they don't look, they don't know how, kind of. And maybe they just need an encouraging word or to hear something, you know, like somebody offering whatever encouragement, support, and kind of sharing their story. Because one thing about alcoholism, 
that was figured out many years ago is to go to some psychiatrist who's a genius, you know, that's book read, he's an expert on everything. For some reason, that wasn't working. And they were just saying, anybody who's an alcoholic is just insane. Put him in the straitjacket and lock him up. What they, what he, what Bill W or whatever realized was that if he talked to somebody else who was that same, had that same compulsive kind of uh, thing about them, that make that makes it to where it's very difficult to quit drinking. If he hangs out with that guy, hey, that guy is just like me. And for some reason, that worked. So me being an alcoholic and reaching out to somebody who's struggling. They can relate to me I, and I can relate to them and hopefully I can be helpful at least, uh, you know, be encouraging. And so that that's what I've done over the years, you know, for about 12 years, I've been doing that. Um, as an alcoholic myself, um, who's um, had my ups and downs uh, over the years, um, there's one thing in the program that they say is, um, you can't really make somebody come to you, but you can be available. So in your industry in music, I know you've come across hundreds, maybe thousands of people that would fit the category of somebody who's suffering. Um, at that point, do you just make it known that um, you don't drink anymore? And if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it? Or um, The way it got started was I just reached out on Facebook and I just, basically said if anybody's out there suffering you know uh, struggling with alcohol i i'm always available to to be a sober friend you know offer offering encouragement and uh support and and that's about it I, I, all i'm doing is offering my sober friendship you know to somebody who's uh, hurting out there and people started getting a hold of me, and I would just get with them one on one. And, you know, I've seen a lot of success and, and seen not only their life change, but their appearance. You know, they might look like hell, and then all of a sudden it looks like a complete different person. So there's a lot of miracles that happen. Um, and, you know, and, you know, one thing I try to do with, um, are you there? Yeah, I'm getting a phone call in, and this is screwing up my video. Okay. I'm not impressed. Uh, on one, thing I try to, one thing I try to do is identify their triggers. You know, that's one of the main things, what makes them kind of drink or whatever. So there's a lot of things that are involved. I, you know, I'm a sober advocate. I get involved, and... Uh, just make myself available. It's very simple. Okay, let me just see if I can get my video back here. Um, oh, perfect. There you are. I can't believe it. I, last week I had an interview with Joe, you know, Joe Satriani. Yeah. I was going to shoot myself in the foot because I was preparing for it because he's big like you. And I mean, I'm thinking, okay, don't F this up, man. And there my phone. Anyways, I'm going to give that person <laughs> for calling. Anyways. <laughs> So do you have a Facebook uh, page that people go to, or is it your personal Facebook page? Yeah, I have a Facebook page. Um, do you want to give up the you know, name? Instagram. It's just Mark Kendall. You, you can just pull it. On pull Facebook? up my name. I, I'm not hiding from nobody. <laughs> okay. The IRS <laughs> isn't after you for that all that 250K you're throwing around? Uh, yeah. Yeah, people <laughs> are putting the bite on me for a loan. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so... Where was I going before that phone call interrupted me? Uh, anywho, we can just touch on that later. Um, so, anyways, um, are you guys are you writing anything solo wise, or because um, I know that you guys haven't released an album, you're you're you're, you're touring, but um, anything in the yeah. mix? Yeah, recording? Um, we, I've been writing like crazy and um, going into the studio. Um, you know, making demos, been going down to Tracy G's, a former guitar player that was in Dio, was in a band called World War Three with Vinny Apice and, and Jimmy Bean. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a studio that's more conducive <laughs> than what I have here. 
So, you know, he does a lot of records there and stuff and it's, it's just a home studio, but it's, you know, it's, it's more, um, you know, ready to go. I just show up and I, and make songs and, you know, uh, just to, to present to the band, you know, cause when we all get together, um, everybody throws in their ideas and we work on things together as a band. Um, so I've been doing that, but my bass player just uh, went through back surgery. So Scott. we're kind of waiting for, yeah, Scott uh, just went through, had back surgery. He's doing much better. He is, uh, so as soon as he is up and running, we're going to get together um, and, and get a record together. We we're not sure how we're going to do it yet. We haven't really had a lot of meetings about that. We're going to put out a 12 song thing, or are we just going to put out maybe five songs at a time? You know, the world has changed so much. We're not really sure. Well, the, you know, we want to speak to some people and see what the best way to do it. Put that's out a kind of, of the trend. Sorry to interrupt. Um, is releasing a song or two at, at a time because people on social media are so pulled this way and that way. People don't really have time to sit and listen to a full album. So a lot of bands, uh, Dawkins, for instance, are releasing one or two songs at a time. The, the album's out, but he's uh, Don's doing videos one or two at a time, and he said "Yeah, kind of what's... That, that's probably what we'll do. You know, um, just not give them too much information at once, you know, and just throw out videos of, yeah. of what we feel like are their best songs. Yeah, otherwise and, it's kind uh, of overwhelming, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, since all the mediums are kind of taken away with the record stores, the, the radio and, and MTVs and, and all that, and people mostly download songs, I, it, it sounds, you know, sensible to just put out one or two songs at a time. It, it, it you know, it makes the most sense. Yeah, everything is just it's just so much information for people to take in. It's uh, it's impossible to uh, like. I mean, if you guys released a, a, an album, I'd listen to the whole album. But it's because of my sure. generation, your generation, right? Yeah. Right. But um, yeah. So uh, so, anyways, um, I won't keep you too much longer. You've been a gracious host as always. Um, now, favorite Canadian band? I think I asked you this last time. Let's see if it's changed. Or, or guitarist. My favorite what? Canadian band or guitarist. Oh, favorite Canadian band. Um, there's been a couple. Um, well, one, one, you know, and it, it's kind of changed. I have many. Um, I always loved Heart. I thought Heart is you know, they had all the elements of songwriting, the vocals, and the amazing, you know, Anna and Nancy. Um, so that's a badass band. Um, let's see. Um, Randy Bachman. I mean, you know, how, how can you? That guy is such a good songwriter. It, it's It should be illegal. I mean, he, he I don't know what how his brain puts together the stuff uh, from the Guess Who. I mean, some of those songs are just so iconic um, that it, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, and then there's just, uh, you know, um, now I'm kind of having a brain hemorrhage right now, but we just, we played with this band a couple of years back um, in Europe with Turn Me Loose. A lover um, boy. Lover Boy. I, I really like Lover Boy. And uh that bass player, man, his tone is so insane. I could not believe it. It usually when I when I see a band, I want to go talk to the guitar player and go, Hey man, you know, what what do you use? And I really like that or something. I want to know what the bass player like I couldn't believe his sound. I, I pay it a lot of, of attention to bass players. Mm -hmm. because I think it's an important element that drums and bass for the guitar. It, it supports it. And it, oh, yeah. and if it kind of sounds crappy, 
it's like your engine's not running well and you know you probably need a tune up that guy's tone just melts in into what the band does so that's a great band uh, you know april wine that's another great band there's so many great Canadian miles bands. um miles goodwin just passed away actually um from uh, april wine. it was actually i heard about that on the internet yeah yeah um, when you're saying something about Randy Bachman, I was just thinking, honestly, man, uh, you, you, you go to weddings here and there. I'm sure you're invited, correct? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I've been so ready. if, if, if they gave Randy Bachman seven cents for every time taking care of business was played at a wedding, he'd be a billionaire. <laughs> every wedding has that song in Canada. Anyways, I don't know about the States. Taking care of business. Every yeah. time. There you go. <laughs> I remember um, when I was uh, just a very young teenager, my mom and I, I was probably like 13 or maybe 14, I can't remember, but my mom and I had a paper route. And I remember, you know, it was mostly AM back then, AM radio, and taking care of business was just blasting out the radio, man. That song was in like massive rotation. So, yeah. That's, there you go. That's another one. He actually wrote three songs for us one time. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And we didn't use them. Um, one, I remember talking, it, it had our name in it, Let the Great White Shine and all this stuff. And and the other song was some song called Cher Sherry, or, but it was already a hit. By some other Canadian band, I, um, something bad or something about Sherry or because Sherry is not, not a Journey song. Not not that not that one, not that one. It was a different one. Oh, often anyways, it, anyways, this song was um, it, it it was already out, so we didn't do that one. So, but anyways, we, we've had encounters with them. Yeah. He's just such a legend that that name popped into my head right away when you said Canadian. That's, you know, it's awesome, Mark. It, you know, I think genius immediately. You know, I, I'm hunting for the genius. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> well, they'll rub off on me in some way. Oh, I don't know. I think you've rubbed off on a lot of other people. I mean, you're a legend in your own right. Um, a lot of my favorite songs come from you guys when you um, released um, "Once Bitten" and. Um, not not just save all your love, but um, living on the edge, one of my favorites. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah and, I mean all the older stuff too is great, but um, yeah. Thanks so much for your time, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Uh, take care, man. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.